Welcome to the Northern Powerhouse interview series, where we're unashamedly spreading good news by interviewing Northern businesses and their successes during the pandemic. Subscribe to be notified of new interviews or click the link in the description to take part if you'd like to be interviewed yourself in a future episode. Great, well, welcome to Northern Powerhouses, our business success stories series of interviews. Today we have with us Andrew Pilling of E3R. So welcome, Andrew. And if you'd be kind enough to introduce yourself uh, to the audience, who you are and what E3R do and help you help your clients, that would be great. Hi there, yeah. Andrew Pilling, Director of E3 Recruitment. Um, we set E3 up back in 2013 now, predominantly engineering, manufacturing, recruitment at all levels, shop floor, through to uh, design, project, quality and senior managerial roles. Um, we spread ourselves across a multitude of different industry sectors. There's food and FMCG, chemical farm, there's general manufacturing, building construction products, um, and aerospace uh, and automotive. I know it's quite a, a broad spectrum there, um, but we've aligned ourselves to these industries um, strategically. Should one industry fall short, right. we've clearly got a number of other sectors that we're aligned to. Um, and yeah, we're... We've grown, um, we've grown year on year, 28% compound growth. Um, I think turning wow. over now just shy of 10 million pound in our seventh year. Um, so things wow. are very positive. I know it's been, it's been a challenge, but it's been a positive one all the way through. Um, of course, you know, we've, uh, we've made some fantastic hires into the, into the company. We've got a fantastic training platform. The culture here is, um, well, what the, what, what our consultants say, the culture is very strong, which is a testament really to everyone and, and, and how we want it to uh, to work here with an E3 recruitment. So, uh, yeah, it, it's so far so good. Obviously, last year with COVID was a real challenge for us and everyone alike, of course. Um, I think starting in March when, uh, when, when Boris or when the government announced, right, lockdown, nobody really knew what lockdown was and everything just closed. We Everyone, everyone closed the doors very quickly. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then we opened ours up quite quickly following because there were some businesses that said, well, we still need engineers. Yeah. There were Morrisons and one or two other food and FMCG companies that were saying, well, our lines are continually, ours are open. We need engineers on lines, E3. We need your continued support. So, very quickly, we got assigned a key worker or a key worker supplier status from Morrison's and from one or two other companies, which allowed us to continue working right. in the office um, and some at home as well. We did use the furlough scheme for one or two of our, uh, our consultants, but in the main, we, we kept open. Um, our business dropped off very quickly from having 300 contractors out, dropped down to 120, literally within a week. Nobody was taking on permanent staff. So all the permanent interviews that we'd got lined up, all gone. Everything was cut down. So I think we came back in. I think Boris uh, announced it on the Thursday lockdown. We came in on the Monday, thought, what's happening now? What are we going to do? Um it was really eerie. You were driving on the roads. No one was about. It was a, it was a strange feeling. Yeah. Obviously, it's very you know there was a lot of um, a lot of worry about COVID as well. So ultimately, the, we then started adopting a, a social distance sort of approach within our office. Yeah. It, it it was a strange scenario. It really was, and it was like right, what we're we doing now? We've got all these companies who are remaining open. That's great. We've got all these. We've got some consultants looking after those, but what we're doing with the other businesses, how are we going to, uh, you know, how are we going to engage with all our current clients, all our target list clients as well that we've been, uh, yep. that we've been working with, but without any positions on. So it, 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 it was quite a, uh, you know, a right back to the drawing board and how are we going to approach recruitment now in a lockdown scenario? It was yep. quite challenging back to basics. A lot of it, it was not being that sales hungry recruitment company. It was still open. It wasn't selling. It was it was offering support. Yeah. It was offering guidance to candidates and clients alike. 
okay. we uh, we're offering guidance then to the NHS. I mean, the um, I, th I think all the I think I think the NHS were trying to get some feelers out to many companies yes. who could help supply with PPE. Well, that's textile manufacturing, and, and we covered textile manufacturing of one of our sectors in the FMCG world. So we engaged them with a client of ours. Right. So can you manufacture any Perspex screens, the face screens? Yep. We potentially got um, yeah, the, the government need, or we've got a link from the NHS who, who were looking at procuring a company who can do this. We won an order of half a million face screens for this company, one of our clients. So they then started manufacturing these face screens and you know that was quite good we didn't get anything for it of course it was more offering a different yep. type of service to our yep. clients to industry and to the government so our time became not as recruiters but as a service function to support the lockdown process i suppose it was a yep. it was strange and then we uh one of our charity uh, one of our Partners, our, um, our charity partners, the Forget Me Not Hospice. Yeah. Um, clearly lockdown came and a lot of their funding came from, clearly it's all charitable work. And that meant events and it meant dragon yep. boat races or colour run races where obviously yep. all the companies jumped in, loaded up with money and it all went to charity. All that got cut. So they're thinking, what can we do? Um so we engaged with them and then we set up some comedy events every Friday night and we got David Walliams and uh, who else did we get? Um, we, we got set five or six different wow. comedians on a Friday night sponsored by E3 in relation to uh, the Forget Me Not charity. So we were putting that out to all our consult, all our employees, all our, all our temporary workforce, all our contractors, all our clients could jump on it um, so we were offering a different approach and a different service, not just that, right, these recruiters are open and they're bashing the phones because imagine taking a sales call when everyone's on lockdown or you're working from home. You didn't have the numbers anyway and it just wouldn't sat well. So, um, yeah, challenge, but, um, you know, that lot of getting... Our consultants back into the office um, at distance, yep. of course. Business continued to uh, to rise. We, uh, we we got on with a company called Ineos. Ineos yep. manufacture a variety of products, but they set up a hand sanitizer plant up in the northeast. Um, we knew, right. I know it was really quite interesting. We knew one of the plant directors, uh, a gentleman up there, and we must have either caught him at a good time or you make your own look. I don't know which one it was. Um, and he said, Andrew, we need a, can you help us out? We're setting this plant up uh, to manufacture hand sanitizer. We need 10 chemical process ops next week. I'm like, well, is the site set up yet? And he said, well, no, not yet. We only got the sign off last week, but we need a fully operational facility in 14 working days. Oh my God. <laughs> I know. So they had a big warehouse up in the northeast with loads of inventory in it and loads of stock. They literally got rid of all that and very quickly put a, uh, a, a makeshift manufacturing line yeah. in, almost a plant. Now, if you've ever seen a bottle of hand sanitizer, yep. it's 70% ethanol or it's alcohol, basically, 70% yep. alcohol, and the rest are flavorings or colorants and water, basically, to, uh, yep. to bring it together. So it's quite a simple process. So Winios started manufacturing this very quickly and they said, right, Andy, get us 10, get us 10 chemical process ops for Monday. So when not having an order for a month, not having one order at all from any client to say, right, we need 10. It was like, oh my gosh, right, guys. The whole company jumped on getting 10 engineers, really? chemical process engineers. So we did that within two days. We then got a call, Andrew, great. They're all in. They've all been... Uh, they've all passed the COVID checks, et cetera, et cetera. Can you get us another 10? Can you get us another 20? Can you get us another? Ultimately, we've got 90 chemical process engineers oh, on site yeah. now up in the Northeast. Um, and that was throughout lockdown one into probably October time. They've now invested £20 million into site and they've commercialised it into a company now called Ineos Hygienics. Um, so that's a real feel-good story, really. In the northeast, um, up in the northeast, 
we obviously we were, we were networking and putting our adverts out. We were getting some real positive vibes from the workforce up there. Oh, it's great. You know, there's a company recruiting and yep. it, it just gave everyone a bit of a boost. I know it wasn't in our local area here, but up in the Northeast, this company were recruiting throughout COVID when everyone's either the, the jobs have been cut yeah. or they're on furlough or they've been made redundant. So then offer this a positive story that this business is growing, they're investing in it. They need, you know, engineers on site, not just engineers. There were, there were process operatives. So anything from, I think the rates were, the, you know, £11 an hour up to the skilled guys rose, it rose even further. So it was a real feel good sort of story for the, really? the, the workforce up in the Northeast. As I said, we've, uh, we've got 90, 90 individuals on site. We've worked with their procurement team, the HR team, the project team. We are, there's an actual project manager on site managing the whole development of the site. And he's an actual contractor for me three. So he's piecing together this 20, 30 million pound phase one build of the site. So, um, yeah, it was quite good as a whole. It was, uh, it was fairly, it was challenging. It was oh my rewarding that we got an order, but it was more rewarding to see, obviously, the uh, the engineers get a job and then the positive feedback from yeah. them when they got the job on site. Well, so, uh, well done. What a roller coaster. Um, that, that's incredible. What's interesting, actually, is I think going back, looking back over lockdown, I think when people, especially the first one, what people were looking for, which you, you provided, was, was support and leadership. Um, mm. They wanted to know we cared which you clearly did, that we're there to help and you help them with, with, with um, things that weren't necessarily to your benefit. And also that, you know, that we had a plan. We, we were here, we, we were going to see ourselves through this. And I think a lot of companies were attracted to people that could go, you know, yeah, it's challenging, but this is where we're going and, and would attract. So well done. Well done. What, what, um, what you know, as a leader of, of the business and out, outwardly to your clients, what, what, what sort of adaptations do you f feel you've made? I think, um, you know, I, I was saying it to a client some months ago. COVID's brought almost like a new technolo technology revolution. You know, beforehand, maybe a year or two, video interviews was, yep. it was quite, you know, futuristic. I know some companies like to apply it, but it wasn't readily available. It wasn't the go-to, you know, you'd pick up a phone and do a telephone interview, even though Zoom and Skype was about, you know, a couple of years ago, yeah. it wasn't the one thing. Oh. And look at us now, both you and I are having a meeting. Instead of a call, we're on a, we're on a Zoom meeting. We're being recorded. Um, it's sort of indirectly been rammed down our throats as the only means to actually stay connected from a face to face to face perspective um it's like a mini industrial revolution from a technological uh, viewpoint um massively and you know at one point i think i was just about to write a blog skype versus teams versus zoom versus whatever ones which is the best platform to use they're all as good as each other ultimately and it's whichever your preference is um so yeah it, there's a big technical technological advancement yep. from what's happened. There's a new methodology of working from myself, yep. from consultants, from my fellow directors. Jumping on a Zoom is normal now. A year yep. ago today, it was probably, what are we doing on Zoom? I'll just ring you, come into the office, or I'll see you just down the road. We'll grab a coffee at Costa. But now it's so it's quicker, it's more responsive, yep. it's... So I think that's been a, a very quick, not learning curve, that's wrong, but an adaptation of what's happened and the technology yeah. now has become just the norm of, of how we engage with people, um, both internally and externally. It's, uh, totally agree. It, it's funny, um, you say what you said. I, mean, we, um, I was having a, a team, we have a, a morning team meeting, and... Yeah one of the team members was having trouble with bandwidth. So we all turned the videos off because obviously that increases bandwidth. Yeah. And it <laughs> felt really, so in effect, it was a tele, you know, teleconference call. It felt so yeah. strange that I couldn't see people. If you know what I mean, it, it, it really yeah. was like, we, we both, we, everyone just sort of just stopped and went, 
oh, this is feels weird because we're used to looking at people on these calls. Um, that, 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 that's fasc uh, really fascinating. So, um, what I, I'm interested uh, in terms of, and I was talking to somebody uh, itself earlier as well about the idea that, you know, travel, you know, when you really look at it now, how much we wasted time traveling um, when it probably wasn't necessary. Um, but one thing we've looked at moving forward, I was going to ask you shortly about, about looking forward, but um, is we'll probably keep doing what we do primarily using this format because delivering the services we offer, the coaching services is quite effective in this environment. But what, what you get from being with somebody is also that social interaction. And, but but the, the, the way we're going to approach that is actually specifically have social events where it's just social, where, as opposed to business and a bit of social. It's interesting, you know, we'll, we'll do the work here and then yeah. rather than, you know, have a coffee, we'll go out to dinner and, and make it something special. And I think yeah. for us and, uh, you know, being to know your, your thoughts on that, it, that, that's one of the ways we're going to work moving forward. So, so of the things that you've done, um, what, what, what are you going to keep on doing when we get back to new normal? Well, the new normal, um, the new normal, I think we're in the new normal now. I think um, yeah. when normal... You know, when lockdowns, when lockdown is eased, yeah. and, and I don't know, I, I don't know how comfortable people will be saying, I'll tell you, I'll drop down and meet you, you know, I'll come and meet you face to face when, you know, we can adopt, a, a, you know, some video technology. Whilst I'm very much promoting technology, I think the interaction physically with people, even in our office, when we've had, when we've had our employees working from home, and the engagement and the camaraderie yep. uh, between your peers, um, you lose that massively. Yeah. So it, 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 it's been quite hard, and I haven't worked from home day in, day out, but I know some of our, our consultants have been working from home, and it's quite hard. It's a new approach. You, you're in yep. your own office or you're in your own space, and you've got a job to do, and you're on your own, so it's self-motivation. Whereas here, if some of the guys are having a, a I don't know, a a low morning and the coffees haven't yeah. woken them up and it's it's easy to g individuals up within it within a team yeah. or office dynamic um so it's then going back to your question the new norm what will it be like it's really quite hard isn't it because we're going to have yeah. to we're going to have to plug ourselves in back to maybe how it was with the mindful set that covid probably is never going away yeah it might be a bit daunting to shake somebody. I don't know when the last time I've shook somebody's hand. It might be daunting to shake somebody's hand. Will that be the new norm? Will that be frowned upon? Is it going to be elbow punching? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, know. So it's quite hard, really. We're probably, we're, of course, we're going to continue to adopt the video technology. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I can't see E3 as a business ever working from home remotely, permanently right. at all. Um, we like the team dynamic in the office. We like the cultural aspect of having engagement face to face. Yeah. Um, going to meet clients. Um, yeah, I think, you know, all the video technology is great. But I think from a perspective of when you're trying to sell a job or talk to a candidate about a facility, it's always good to walk around a manufacturing site. It's always good to yep. see the offices with your actual eyes and look around and understanding the space and the journey to a manufacturing site. Yep. So you can explain that to the candidates a lot more. So um, it's going to have its positives. It's going to be quicker. I think first interviews with clients are probably going to be done via video technology. Second yep. interviews might be, uh, you know, conducted face to face. So I think there's going to be some changes, absolutely, in everybody's process. Um, but I don't see it being absolutely huge. I don't know how, you know, you, you look at the retail uh, sector, which is probably a bit over my head. But when you walk down the high street, of course, yeah, you know, there's the the high street's probably gone. It's all online, so. You, there might be a different type of uh, social function when people go out for a walk down the high street. There's not that huge amounts of shops there. So is it grabbing a coffee? You know, is it is it walking around the country parks or, or what heritage sites and whatnot? Is that going to change a lot more than you know just dropping out going shopping? I don't I don't know. There's a it, it it's a tough one really, isn't it? It's it's fascinating, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think I mean 
my personal view of the high street is it will become more focused on experiential experiences. So there'll be the, the coffee. I'd like to see the idea of the sort of continental, you know, cafe tables yeah. outside where you can sit and watch people go by. And then the shops that come in or, or stay will be the ones where you want to go and shop. Yeah. It, I don't, I think if we just want to buy something and we know what it is, we'll go yeah. online. It just, it's a bit like having meetings on Zoom. It just makes sense. Yeah. But the things you want to try on or, um, you, you know, it, having an experience yeah. of buying something, whether that's clothes or jewellery or or something that is a special occasion. I think that we'll see more of those. And it'll be, let's go to the shops because it's not just about getting lots of bags. It's about having an experience. And I think, you know, I'd like to see that because I think that would be better for us all. Maybe things like, you know, more fresh and small fresh fruit, you know, food producers. Yeah. But back in the high street, you, you know, your butcher and your baker and th these sorts of things where we've got yeah. maybe artisan people where it's specialist. Um, I, I hope so, personally, because uh, I'd hate for, for, to see the high street go. But, I, yeah. you know, I, 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 I do I spend a bit of time in France. My, my father lived over there and, you know, their, their centres, their squares are very much about a cafe and a, you know, Beautiful a and yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, I'd like to see that because I don't know other than maybe you know I guess in the UK we have a pub where we go and meet but it'd be nice to have you know maybe other places where we just get become social more social yeah. um, absolutely weather permitting of course well that's the only issue but <laughs> you know, it, it, it's interesting I, I know you know our local pub you know she that they you know they because the, the last the initial lockdown the only thing yeah. you could do not the first lockdown but when we came yeah. was, was outside so the idea right, of yeah. you know heaters and, and coverings and stuff we can do it i think if we you know we're quite a resourceful country is, is is look at what we need to do because we do need to allow for the the wonderful thing that we have which is weather um, yeah, that's it <laughs> so, so well um I mean, it's great to hear about, you know, the growth that you, you, you're seeing and, and, and well done for doing what you've done, especially, you know, a lot of people go, you know, oh, that would be great that clients say, can you help us build a factory, you know, separate factory, but I'm sure that came with a whole lot of challenges with it. And um, it, well, massive well, challenges. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, even, even we normally might like to meet up with everybody we interview. Yeah. And to verify who they are and got the right yes. attributes and qualifications, they've got the right cultural fit. So, as I said before, when you go onto a site, you like to understand the culture of that facility. So, the challenge with this, it was a brand new site. We couldn't go visit the site for evident, everyone was locked down. Um, so to get the cultural perspective was, was was quite challenging. I think with volume recruitment like that, because it ended up being volume recruitment, it was yep. a technical. They were technical roles, but we were recruiting en masse. Um, so there was a lot of there was a lot of communication clearly with the hiring managers and the directors of Ineos to understand their flexibility because getting 90 individuals all with a certain skill set and nobody could move into the area. So you're, you're fishing from somebody somewhere within a 20 mile commute potentially. Yep. How are we going to get those skills in? They needed to be drug and alcohol tested on site because it's a hazardous site. Of course. They, um, yeah. You know, what shift patterns? Can we flex the shifts? You know, what bandwidth has a client got from maybe the tr a training perspective? If candidates can come with X, Y, and Z, but they need maybe a number of other skills, can that be trained up? So there was a whole onboarding process. And between us and them, we were both creating a a flexible job spec for each hire in essence. Um, and I think all then the, uh, all, you know, we must have conducted, you know, to get 90 individuals, we probably conducted three, 400 video interviews. Yep. And some of the guys um, were, were probably not technically savvy. So we're just saying, look, just open up your phone. I've sent you a link, open it up. And some guys, you know, they might not have had a smartphone still, so that posed a challenge. So, you know, there might be individuals with 20, 30 years chemical experience without, you know, having emails and without having a, a smartphone. And so, yeah, there were challenges. Um, 
we, we overcame it. There was a lot of service reviews. There were, you know, there was a lot of touch points, you know, every day, every other day with certain key stakeholders within the business. Uh, the communications were strong. When the government, they were regularly changing what the communication was like to, uh, to the UK. So we were sending letters out what that actually meant to our workers. Could they still work? Couldn't they? They're classed as critical workers or key worker suppliers. Yep. So we to send all this communication out. There were times when one or two of the candidates were going for an interview on the side and the police were stopping them saying, where are you going? You know, you, you, it's locked oh, down. Heck. Yeah. We've got interviews here. So the police were stopping them and we had to, obviously they had to show proof that they were going for an interview and it was through. So there were a lot of challenges um, from all angles, really. Um, but we, we overcame it well. I, mean, I think they did. And, you know, there is a bit of a feel-good story there. We've, you know, we, we've increased our turnover by 2 million in lockdown. So, you know, with 10 and a half million wow. over now, we were 8 million the previous year. Um, you know, this year it looks like a 13 million pounder um, turnover and, and we're continually hiring within E3. So we're very, very busy. And I think that's just to the alignment of the industry sectors yeah. that we've worked. If we'd only worked in automotive or aerospace, yeah. we might be, I might yeah. be having a different conversation with you about how bad it is and what yeah. we're doing next and the funding that we might need to be seeking and the support that we're, we're looking at. But I suppose we've uh, we, we've got around all that without any support. We've offered services, not just recruitment, to industry. Yes. Yeah. And I suppose that's painted a, maybe a different picture of how E3 have engaged yeah. with everyone throughout the uh, the pandemic. Well, what a great case study to be able to, you know, almost a new service of being able to help a client set up a manufacturing site in such a short period of time. I mean, that's... That's what you know. That's a point of difference, right there, isn't it? I mean, it absolutely. Well, and, and Morrison's were, was a big one. Morrison Food Manufacturing. Yeah. They've got many sites in the UK, and they were working at whatever percentage. But when everyone was um, all the bakery sides, when when the bread was short and the the, yeah. the shelves were all running low, they were working on overtime. So they needed engineers to continually run these lines. So. Our right. food division, which my director Tracy runs, her team was swamped out as well. So they, we were getting orders of, you know, can you get us 10 engineers next week? Can you get us 15 engineers at another site across in the northwest? So as much as we had quite a lot of consultants working on this big job up in the northeast, we had then, you know, three or four or five consultants then working manufacturing and engineering uh, type maintenance roles covering food and manufacturing businesses across the UK. So it added another dynamic to that. Um, yep. And then, of course, when industry starts, it, it started all coming back. Yep. Our consultants kept coming back and we were we were exceptionally busy in a positive way. So um, it, it led us to realign where our focus was, where our E3's focus was, and it was all about credible service to industry. And yep. to our clients and candidates, um, you know, that we were compliant within our process. Everyone going out to interview had been through a COVID risk assessment. Yep. Everything was done at distance or video technology when we could. So it has led to a new sort of dynamic within the business. And, you know, dare I say it, you know, it, it's it's a positive one. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it just great to hear such great, you know, great, great news and great, great, great stories. I mean, looking forward, it, it, I mean, do you foresee any key challenges as, as you know, as we move forward for, for you? Um, I think the challenges come from you've got to be flexible enough to move with what's happening because when yep. things are turned on and off like a light switch, which they have been, yep. Yep. You know, how's that affected E3 as a company? The government have been good with using the flexible furlough approach. Yeah. And we have used that on one or yep. two of occasions with a couple of our employees within certain sectors that haven't been buoyant. Also within the marketing side as well, we've flexed that furlough approach. Possibly challenges come, maybe not within E3, but with industry as a whole, when the furlough switched off. Yep. How's it going to look? Is job employment going to 
the, the rate's going to be exceptionally high. Um, it's been quite a challenge for as a recruitment company because when you're recruiting in, in, a, in a challenging time, people prefer to stay within the businesses where they're at. Because yes. If you, if you were to move into a company, you go through the, the challenge of your probationary period, not knowing the company, it, it's, it's the unknown that people don't like. So as a recruiter, trying to then gain, gain quality candidates or any candidates to go from one company to another has been a, a huge challenge in itself. So there are jobs there, there are candidates there, but marrying the two has been the challenge because nobody's been moving. Um, the contract and temporary market has been buoyant, but the permanent market has been a challenge. But we shall see how 2021 goes. I mean, we're, we're completely stacked out. We're recruiting here at E3. We need three or four other recruiters. We're looking at a new office for expansion. Um, so things at the moment, dare I say, it, are good, but we've got a flexible approach that we know what our break-even line is within the business. We yeah. know what our budget and our target lines are. So we know if we achieve this, we can we can do this to the company. If, if we hit bottom line, then we've got to make some efficiencies maybe or seek government support in, in certain areas. Yep. We've got to just have a flexible business plan. Um, and the five-year yep. business plan has not been ripped up, but it's been modified so much to reflect yep. the times that we're in. Um, yep. I, I mean, I think one of the things about planning, we, we've always operated on the idea of three, to, three and five-year goals, i.e. Yep. things we want to achieve, but, but short-term planning, 90-day, you know, 90-day action planning. And, that's you know, that, 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 that's proven to be sensible because any, any plan that was written, any yeah. annual plan even was written last January, was yeah. obviously torn up completely or pretty much completely as of, um, as of March. So it's, it's, it's knowing where you want to go through goals, I think, but then saying, right, step by step, what do we do next? And um, I think it makes sense. So... Just thinking about um, sort of a bit introspection, what, what would you say you've learned about yourself over the last 12 months? Um, it's quite hard, really, because have I analysed myself? It's It's been a million miles an hour. Obviously, yeah. being a business owner and director with my fellow yeah. business partners, there's, an ever, there's a worry there that we employ, you know, 34 individuals, and there's a worry there, job security, you know, what we're doing, how's it looked upon that, you know, that some individuals have been furloughed, some are retained in the business. We have yeah. had to make some efficiencies. So we have had to make, you know, one or two individuals redundant. So it, it, it's been quite a challenge for me to, you know, go down any redundancy routes that we've had to take. It's, you know, it, I don't like to say business is business. You've just got to do what you've got to do. I know. But when you've, you know, when you when you've got thirty four employees in the company that are all on board and tuned into E three, and some efficiencies have got to be made, you've got to look at the bigger picture, I suppose. Yeah. So it's very hard to get very personal and engaged with somebody, and you know, they, they might not be too happy that you know they're going down a redundancy situation because of what's going on with the pandemic. And it's quite hard to, you can empathize with them, yeah. which then causes a challenge for you that you're going through this. So it, it's, I don't know. I don't know whether I've built a bit more of a backbone or not. That's probably wrong. Um, have I become a bit softer? I don't know. It, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's probably opened your eyes up to a lot of other areas really, because we've never been through a challenging time because the growth's yeah. been quite, consistent within E3. Yeah. We've never had a blip. So the first blip was obviously the pandemic. When our insurers, every one of our clients is insured through QBE. So QBE literally and all the insurers globally pretty much turned off 80% of all insured limits with all our clients. Are right. Right. We've got two million pounds that's owed to us. Our insured limits have cut. Clients are ordering from us without insurance what's our risk profile now within the business? Yeah. How much can we give to that client without insurance? So we've had to work with our insurers, QB, and we've had to work with our, we, we bank through Yorkshire Bank, who have been very supportive as well. Um, Great. How we structure deals, um, be reflective of our rates, because some clients might not be 
our rates might have been too high with certain clients. So we've had to flex our rates to support them as a business. So I think it's the whole flexibility. I think, yeah. you know, I've learned to adapt and be a lot more flexible in our approach, really, um, that we've got a really rigid business plan and we go target that business plan. But actually, we need two sort of mini business plans each yeah. side, really, um, yeah. to fall into them and, and, and continue on that journey, but with a slightly different approach. So I'd say going back to your question, probably a lot more flexible in approach um, yeah. from all areas of working in the office, business, finances, um, even you know cultural support to our uh, our employees. Brilliant, brilliant. I, 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 very exciting times I can see, and um, be, I, I could talk for a lot longer than this. But, but just a, sort of a wrapping up final question: What what do you see the future looking like for you, for you and E three? E three. The future is going to be positive because I think that, that throughout lockdown, everybody pulled the sleeves up within the company everybody had that mindset of we're going to get through this collectively right it's not just about the employees it's not just you guys the the directors we're all in this together so i know we've got a fantastic operation we've got fantastic employees our consultants are all, all sleeves up let's go let's do things in a professional and compliant way so I think the future is fantastically positive. Our budget this year looked rosy. Our figures already for January are very, very good. Brilliant. Everybody's got a positive mindset as opposed to, oh, God, we're knocked down three. What's happening? So every, there's positivity, real positivity. And I think when there's positivity, it can promote feeling and it can promote business. So I, I'm hoping... And I generally foresee things are going to be very positive throughout this year and, 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 and future for E3 recruitment. Brilliant. Well, well Andrew, um, I, one of my favourite quotes is from Henry Ford, who said, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. Um, so you th I think you can, and I'm sure you can. And uh, I, I would love to come back in six, 12 months time and just Absolutely. to see what, what the next phase unfolds. So I just really want to thank you because... Um, as, as, as you know, and I said before we started that, you know, the, the per key purpose of these interviews is to put some good news out there to, to balance up with a lot of the bad news. And, it, you know, everything you've said and, and the way you've approached this last year is, is, a, is a great beacon and, 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 and shining light for, for lots of people. So thank, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you. Cheers. Chris. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for watching. What was your takeaway from today's interview? Please post it in the comments below and subscribe for all our upcoming videos or click for the next video here.